Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Guido Ecker. I'm a director and visual effects supervisor at the Panix in Amsterdam. And today I'll be talking about technical simplicity and creative freedom uh, with the use of Blender. But first, let me give a, a little bit of a background uh, so you get to know me a bit better. Um, who am I? Um, I started my, my study at Media College in Amsterdam. It's close to here. Started uh, doing game design, and from there on, I went into uh, motion design, working at Discovery Networks. Did uh, a lot of motion graphics for them um, within the motion department, but also for Animal Planet, TLC. Um, and from there on, I continued my study at the Netherlands Film Academy, studying visual effects. And during my study there, I also explored a bit more the directorial side, and I slowly transitioned into that as well. Um, and I did my internship at the Mill and the Panix. Um, the Mill London, Panix in Amsterdam. Uh, and currently I work there as a director and VFX supervisor. The Panix, uh, let me tell you a little bit about, about the company that I work for, is, uh, is a fil film production company. Uh, we work mainly on film and commercial content. And within the Panix, we have our own post facility, uh, our own post production company uh, called Post Panic. And uh, often there I'll be uh, also working as a VFX supervisor or a direc director. Um, that said, let me show you a little bit of the works that we do, and uh, it's a small selection of works that we worked on in the la last couple of years. Thank you. So yeah, this is really the, the, the stuff that really drives us, uh, high-end visual effects, but also a combination of uh, a little bit of that sci-fi touch to it, uh, usually in our film and commercial uh, work is that. Um, that said, uh, today I'll talk about uh, Still Here, um, which is a film that I created almost entirely by myself, um, and with the use of Blender, uh, Blender EV. Um, it's, it's a sci-fi noir film, um, set in a, in, a, in a very apocalyptic uh, world, which is fully polluted. And uh, in this world, a, ma a man is in search for his last breath of fresh air. Um, and, and the, but, but the government still sort of um, uh, is in control of all the plants and nature in this world. So it's only for the rich to be enjoyed. Uh, that said, I, I, I want to tease, uh, tease you guys a little bit about the project before I start breaking it down. Rotten food, salty water, no more nature. And you think they made us scared of robots? Well, they knew that we were never going to reach that far into the future. Scared for our jobs, we kept working hard and ignoring all the signs that the Earth has patiently given us. Some say they have left us. But others say they are lavishing themselves like gods on Olympia in these last hours on our planet. All right. So, a little teaser. <laughs> um, but it all kind of started two years ago during COVID, fully locked down. And I, wa I had, a, had this beautiful script, and I wanted to create a live action film out of it. Uh, as I often also direct live action commercials. Um, but yeah, everybody in lockdown, no friends available, no crew available. I was like, shit, how can I still make this film uh, while still being yeah, cl closed off, sitting inside in my room, uh, like you see up here. Um, and I thought, okay, let me just then do it as a full animation film, fully CG. Um, but knowing that and knowing the amount of effort and work it takes, 
I also had to come up with a couple of clever, clever ways in, in order to finish the film. Uh, and one of them uh, was uh, doing it in real time. Uh, and, and during that time, during COVID, there was a lot of talks about, uh, about real-time engines, real-time rendering. Uh, Unity, Blender, uh, Unreal, they all had like, uh, good options here. Uh, but I opted for Blender using Eevee, um, which, which for me was new because I never really touched Blender. So while I was doing the project, I was also kind of learning the software. Uh, I think I started around 2.8. Um, uh, so, so with that said, uh, I went into style development, um, and, and a couple of things influenced this film quite heavily, and, and one of it is my photography that I used to do throughout the years. I did a lot of black and white photography while traveling or while in Amsterdam, and just starting to look at high contrast black and white images, but also low light. Uh, I took some pictures of a friend of mine, but also environmental uh, um, uh, pictures that I took. And, Mainly about sort of uh, yeah the, the lots of smoke that are there the the, the fog the grain that's that's combined uh, so that was one of the things that really heavily influenced the, the style of the film uh, aside from that I also of course had like tons of references and mood boards um, I collected uh, this is one of the mood boards where there's uh, yeah quite a, quite a lot of those dystopian Soviet buildings in there um, but but I also wanted to maintain a sort of a stylistic realism in this film. So everything could be black and white apart from the plants in the film, the, the only thing that was actually still alive in, the, in this world. And this was one of the first um, style frames that I did uh, in Blender, uh, where you could clearly see the black and white image plus the, the plant, which had, had this green visual on it. And from here on, I started to explore a bit more with Blender, creating the first three shots of the film. Um, so this is a really rough mock-up of the, of the geometry. Uh, this is the raw render from Eevee. And then this is the, the final output uh, with some compositing and matte painting on top. And so I, I, I continued working on, on multiple shots, uh, rough geo, output in Eevee, and then uh, the final comp with, with some compositing on top. I hope you can see it with, uh, with all the lights on. Um, and, and, and slowly I started to get a bit more familiar with, with Blender. Uh, the output started to be uh, getting a bit better. Um, and, and so I continued also a little bit more in, in sort of a concept phase. Because a couple of those shots in the films, they, they required a bit more concept work to flesh out the idea of how those plants and parks were sort of in captivity and, and, and only for the rich to be enjoyed. And uh, Blender uh, played a huge part in this, uh, in, in this role because we started in a two, 2D matter but slowly transitioned into 3D, started to visualize the, the shots, uh, seeing what lenses we wanted to use, uh, but also the lighting. And this is the shot. Uh, uh, fully concepted uh, and, and worked out in, in, in 3D. We contributed to our own destruction while they watched us suffocate, sipping their fucking tea leaves in their towers. Uh, that's a, a little part of the, of the full seven minute film. And from here on, I went into animatic. And I hope you guys are familiar with it, but usually an animatic is quite sort of gray looking. Um, but th the benefit of me using Blender and Eevee was that in real time, I could already add some lighting in there um, while still positioning the camera, doing the cinematography, adding the characters in there. And this is all in a very rudimentary way, but it already gave a good indication for me where I had to put all the details uh, because lighting was already part of, 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 uh, of the scene. Another part which I really enjoyed was, was the fact that it, it was all in real time. And usually when I go on a location scout, or a recce as we might call it, you go on a location scout and you start looking where do I want to frame it, how do I want to position the actors. But now I could actually do this all inside my room with Blender, changing the lighting, changing the camera angles, starting to figure out where we actually wanted to shoot on the location which was all centered inside my own computer. Um, and for a comparison, um, this is the final. You did the right thing. Here, as promised. Also, a little bit of the of the film. Um, that said, so. I was able to cut out uh, quite a bit of render time. Each, each frame was about one second a frame, which was a huge time savior. But there was also a lot of characters in the film. Uh, and in order to sort of avoid a lot of heavy animation doing myself, I, I tapped into uh, Mixamo, which you guys might know uh, is a mocap library. Um, and, and, and basically, 
it's all Mixamo that you see in the film, apart from a couple of animations that I did myself. And, and Blender was very useful in this case uh, in, in connecting up all the mocap data and applying it to the characters. So this is one of the characters that I designed, uh, and it was super easy to swap out different mocap data and, and combine it all together. Uh, so again, this was also a huge time saver because it was still a, a full CG seven minute film, and yeah, ideally your passion products, you, you finish them as well. Um, so again, this, this, this was a, a huge help. Um, and from here on, I went into uh, shot creation. So basically, I now had the full animatic. It was already lit. The characters were in there. Um, it was now just down to sort of rendering it out, which didn't take that long. Um, and, and then uh, compositing and matte painting on top. So I'll show you a little bit of a breakdown of this. Thank you. So, so now I've give a, given a bit of an overview of the, of the, of the project, but um, I only showed you a little bit of a teaser, so I want to show you a bit of an extended trailer, but the, the film is available offline, so afterwards I'll show you the link where you can watch the full video. This might be the last. But I suppose every day now, something or someone is the last. But we, the poor, the bulk of this shrinking society, can now only obtain it illegally. I guess that is exactly what nature has become. A sort of hard drug we all need to keep on living to distract us from the fact that we are dying. Oh. Yeah, there's a, there's a kind of a message in there, but you'll get it uh, once you see the full film, hopefully. Um, yeah, that said, it was uh, yeah, such a, a lovely journey to, to work on this project just by myself or a very small team. I think I did like 90% of the CG myself. And of course, I had a lot of uh, nice sound design together with a friend. Um, that said, um, this was a project that I yeah, mainly did by myself, but we also use Blender in, in, in uh, commercial projects and bigger pipelines. Does it work? This was the presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, up here are a couple of links if you want to be in touch or have any questions. See the full film. Uh, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming.